After a spine surgery, you expect your back or neck problem be resolved. Pain subsides in some time. But sometimes that doesn't happen. Maybe immediately or months after your surgery, your old pain and numbness may return back. This may be a condition called failed back surgery, also called failed back surgery syndrome, FBSS. Now, what is failed back surgery? What are the causes? How to deal with this? And what is the outlook? Let's discuss in this video. Hello and welcome. This is Dr. Arun Naik from DocLogs. I'm a spine surgeon, neurosurgeon and a health blogger. If you're new to the channel, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Friends, I am in spine surgery for the last 23 years. Abdominal surgery, urological surgery, heart surgery, eye surgery. In none of these operations, they have anything like a failed surgery, isn't it? Then why failed back surgery? came into existence. Friends, failure of a spine surgery is seen more and more these days. As such, more and more patients are undergoing surgery. This is definitely not a good trend. If you undergo spinal surgery for unindicated conditions, then your surgery definitely fails. It may be any surgery. Having failed back surgery doesn't suggest that your surgery or your surgeon have failed. Many factors that lead to failed back surgery are out of your control. Now, what is failed back surgery? After a spinal surgery, you expect to improve your back function, quality of your life, and of course, ease of daily activities in addition to your pain. If you fail in any of these also, you may end up in FBS umbrella. Simply put, failed back surgery. Your surgeons and your expected surgery outcome has not met. Now, what are the symptoms of failed back surgery syndrome? In addition to neck and back pain, numbness, weakness, tingling sensation in the leg or the arm and radicular pain can be seen. Your walking may become difficult or you may trip and fall. Your balancing may be an issue or you may have weakness of hands or legs. How common is failed back surgery? Friends, studies have clearly shown that failed back surgery occurs in anywhere between 10 to 40 percent of lumbar surgeries with or without spinal fusion. Unfortunately, number of spinal surgeries is increasing. I've been telling it again and again, this is not a good trend. And that's a different topic. Many studies have shown clearly that up to 20% of all spinal procedures were actually not required at the time of these studies. With each spine surgery, you have the chance of success drops. Let's say you have 90% success of your first spinal surgery, all subsequent spinal surgery friends success rates drop. Second surgery will have 50% of success rate, half. Third surgery, 30%. Fourth surgery, less than 10% and so on. That's why I tell all my younger colleagues and trainees, first time is the best time to operate on the spine and spinal cord. We should address all issues in the first surgery itself to avoid failure. Now, what are the risk factors for failed back surgery syndrome? Several factors may influence whether you have failed back surgery syndrome after your spine surgery. These factors may occur before your surgery that is preoperative, during your surgery that is intraoperative, or after your surgery, we call it as postoperative. Now, what are the preoperative risk factors? Number one, presence of mental and emotional disorders like depression, anxiety, and these put you on high risk for failed back surgery syndrome because the source of your pain is in your mind, not in your back. Number two, obesity. Being 
overweight increases your failed back surgery risks, especially if you are lazy and physically inactive person. Number three, diabetes. Being diabetic increases your failed back surgery risk, especially if the blood sugars are not under control. I always insist on getting sugar normalized a month before the surgery. Number four, very important, smoking. Friends, smoking is a definite risk factor for failed back surgery. How smoking causes failed back surgery, I have explained in a separate video in DocLog's channel. The link is somewhere here. Please watch that video. I always insist all my smoker patients to stop smoking one month before and at least three months after surgery. Continued smoking after three months again can lead to the dreaded failed back surgery status. Number five, patients with chronic pain such as fibromyalgia are supposed to land up with failed back surgery very frequently. I always avoid operating on FM patients before their FM symptoms are relieved. Number six, poor patient selection. Well, this is a mistake from our side surgeons. This is probably the biggest reason for a failed back surgery according to me. When a patient comes to me with back or the neck pain, I should see the patient from 360 degree, not just from the spinal point of view, not just the back pain or neck pain. Pain may be coming from your shoulder, your gallbladder or your kidney kidney stones. One patient came to me last month with severe back pain and he was advised spinal surgery by someone. When I did a complete neurological examination, I was certain that he was suffering from an arthritis of his hip joint. The leg pain was due to the hip joint disease, not his spinal problem. So I always tell my juniors to treat their patients and not their MRI scans. Suppose I do a spinal surgery for a patient with a hip joint disease. Tell me how on earth the patient gets the pain relief, isn't it? Another problem which I see is wrong diagnosis of patients with spinal pain. A patient may be having more than one spinal issues and if someone does an unrelated procedure for that condition, I'm sure the surgery will fail. Sometimes we fail, we surgeons, we fail to recognize pre-existing spinal instability like a spondylolisthesis. And if I do only discectomy procedure in such a patient and don't address the instability or the slippage of the vertebral bone, definitely patient will come back with pain again. Only way to give relief in such patients is to do another surgery to fuse the spine. These are a few examples, friends, which I, I, I just thought I should tell. We spine surgeons should choose and select our patients well before the surgery to have a successful post-operative outcome. Number seven, poor surgical planning. This is purely technical issues. We call it as atrogenic. Just remember that your spine surgeon should plan your surgery well. For example, your surgery may fail if the surgery is done on naked eye of the surgeon. Please insist always on microscopic or endoscopic spinal surgery. Well, naked eye spine surgery was 30, 40 years old technology and I have not done a single naked eye spine surgery in my last 23 years as a spine surgeon, friends. And I strongly believe we surgeons should upgrade our operating skills to ensure good patient outcome. Number eight, surgery specific factors. During surgery, many technical issues may lead to failed back surgery syndrome. Incomplete decompression of the nerve root or incomplete removal of the disc material, ligaments or bones may compress the nerve and cause recurrent pain. One more serious issue is wrong level surgery. Seen in about 2% of spine cases where intraoperative imaging was not done properly and the surgeon operates on a wrong level. These are very serious reasons for failed back surgery. As a surgeon matures in his career, 
these complications become less and less. My complications 20 years ago was a bit higher. I have no hesitation in telling. The learning curve has taught me so many lessons and I become more and more refined as a spine surgeon. Because for us surgeons, every case is a new lesson in spine surgery. But believe me friends, with all these years and years of experience, things can go wrong in some patients. Number nine, post-operative failed back surgery risk factors. These may be related or unrelated to the surgery. As we age, our spine as such degenerates and pain is very common after the age of 50. So this degeneration is not related to your surgery. Psychologically for the patient, this is the failed surgery, but technically we cannot call this failed back surgery because this is advancing age. Adjacent segment disease is a condition where the level above or below a fusion has increased stress and therefore can degenerate faster. Epidural fibrosis is another condition when the nerve roots are trapped by the scar tissue after the surgery. This we see quite often. Uh, spinal infection is still seen in some cases, especially in diabetics. Spinal instability related or unrelated to surgery can cause recurrent pain. Watch my channel for risks of spinal surgery and how to mitigate those risks. The link is somewhere here. Now, what is the treatment of failed back surgery? Personally, I use a multidisciplinary approach to address failed back surgery syndrome. Instead of relying on one treatment like medications or surgery, I recommend a combination of therapies that address different facets of failed back surgery. Physical therapist can help restore function and posture. I also prescribe medications to help manage pain and stiffness. Now, what is the surgery for failed back surgery? In some clear-cut cases where I find there is a chance of good recovery for, for example, when I find some residual disc fragment is still remaining in the disc level or when there is some spinal instability, I advise another surgery as a corrective surgery. As I said, second spine surgery carries high risk of uh, neurological deficits, infection, paralysis, etc. I will uh, discuss the issue with the patient and the family, every patient. I will weigh the risks and benefits of the re-surgery. If risks are more than expected benefit, then I deny surgery for such patients and I counsel them accordingly. In uh, my estimate, in only about 20% or so of uh, FBS patients, I may ask for another surgery. With that friends, we have come to the end of this video. Thanks for watching and hope you found this video helpful. If you liked it, give me a big thumbs up. Please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and also hit that bell icon to get instant notifications of my new videos as I upload. There are many videos on spine surgery, um, uh, disc prolapses, uh, I have good videos on spinal canal stenosis. Uh, so please watch my videos to get the entire outlook on the back pain juggernaut. With that friends, let me take a leave till my next one. Feel awesome, live awesome and take good care of your health.